dosage calculations. You either love them or you hate them, but it's really important for you to understand them and how to solve them as you're going into nursing school. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the three methods to solve dosage calculations. Let's get started. We recognize that everybody's gonna learn math a little bit differently. So today we're gonna to be exploring three powerful methods when it comes to mastering these tricky problems. Dimensional analysis, ratio and proportion, and the formula method. Everything that we're gonna be going through in this video is going to be packed into our Nurse Chung dosage calculation workbook. If you're navigating the challenges of nursing school, it's really gonna be important for you to master dosage calculations because it is going to be crucial in order for you to progress in your program. So the workbook is gonna be designed to help you ace those exams. Make sure you grab your copy at nursechungstore.com. So let's kick things off with dimensional analysis. This is actually one of my favorite methods for tackling dosage calculations. The first fraction that we see here is we have our desired dose over one dose. This is gonna be specifically what the provider is ordering for this particular client. The next fraction we have is our conversion between doses. So for example, if a provider was to order grams, but the medication only comes in milligrams, then we would need to do a conversion in order to figure out how to give that particular client a specific amount of medication based on that conversion. If you're confused about how to convert between metric units, I highly recommend that you go back and watch our metric and standard conversions videos. This will help you break down everything you need to know with those pesky conversions. The last fraction is the volume you got over the dosage you got. So here's a quick pro tip. The placement of your units in this equation is going to be crucial in order to solve it correctly. You've got to align them in a way that there are similar units canceling each other out, leaving you the exact units that you're gonna need for your dosage calculation. For instance, if I was to put my milligrams up here and my grams here, I wouldn't be able to cancel out those equations. I have to have milligrams here and milligrams here in order to cancel it out, just like I have to have grams here and grams here in order to cancel those out. Next up, we have ratio and proportion. This method is like solving a puzzle where you have to match a known ratio to another ratio that's missing an essential piece. Your first fraction is going to be the dosage you get over the volume you get is going to be equal to your second fraction, which is the dosage that is ordered and the volume that you need to give. In this kind of equation, you're simply going to cross multiply to find the unknown of the medication that you need to give. If you loved algebra in our ATIT series, then you're probably going to use this method when it comes to dosage calculations. Remember though, it can be a bit of a multi-step dance to get to your final answer using the ratio and proportion formula. And finally, we have the formula method. This was huge when I was in nursing school. This one's pretty straightforward. You have your desired medication dose over the medication dose that you have multiplied by the quantity, which is the form or the amount of medication that there is. It's a simple and direct approach to basic dosage calculations. However, keep in mind that this method might not cut it when it comes to those more complex scenarios. Let's try some practice questions using each one of these methods. The practice question states, a doctor orders 250 milligrams of metronidazole for a patient, but the medication is available in 0.5 gram tablets. How many tablets should the patient take? So starting with dimensional analysis, we're going to start with the desired dose over one dose. In this case, we know that we need to have 250 milligrams in that one dose. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 250 milligrams over our one dose to get our fraction started. Next up, we know that the available medication that we have for us is going to be 0.5 gram tablets. So we're gonna have to do some conversions between milligrams and grams. We know that one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. And remember, when you're setting up your fractions, you need to make sure that the milligrams are going to align and your grams are also going to align because essentially what they're going to do is they're going to cancel each other out. And for our last fraction, we wanna do the volume that we have over the dosage that we have. So in this case, we have one tablet that is equal to 0.5 grams. So once we've set up our fractions, now we're just going to multiply. So we know that milligrams are gonna cancel out milligrams. We know grams are going to cancel out grams. And what we want to do is multiply everything on the top and everything that's on the bottom. So at the top of our fractions, we have 250 multiplied by one gram, multiplied by one tablet is going to give us 
250. And at the bottom of our fractions, we have one dose is going to be multiplied by 1,000, also multiplied by 0 0.5. So we have 1,000 times 0 0.5 gives us 500. So now what we need to do is finish up with a little division. We have 250 divided by 500, which gives us 0 0.5 tablets. So in this case, our patient is going to get half of a tablet. Next up, let's look at our ratio and proportions. So in this case, we are going to cross multiply. We are going to cross multiply everything that's on the top of one by the bottom of another. So in this case, we're going to have 0.5x, that's our 0.5 grams, multiplied by our x tablets. That's what we're trying to figure out. That's going to be equal to 0.25 grams times one tablet. Next up, we need to isolate our x in order to find our equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide each side by 0.5. Now, all we have left is to divide 0.25 by 0.5, and that gives us the correct answer of 0.5. So the thing with using ratio and proportion, as well as the formula method, is when you are having to convert between milligrams and grams or any other kind of conversion, you're going to have to do it first before you actually plug them into your equation. So in this case, we know that we have 250 milligrams, and we need to convert them into grams because that is what our medication is available in. So how do we convert these? It's easy. What we're going to do is we're just going to move our decimal place. So in this case, I know that I'm going from milligrams to grams, which is a base unit. So I need to move my decimal one, two, three times to the left in order to get my correct answer. So moving my decimal, I move it over one, two, three places, and that is going to give me 0 0.25 grams. And now we need to plug it into our formula method, which is desired over have multiplied by our quantity or our vehicle, which is just another way of saying whatever the medication is available in. So I have 0 0.25 grams, which is what I desire, over 0 0.5 grams, which is what I have, multiplied by one tablet. And just like we did over here with our math, we know that X is going to equal 0 0.5 tablets. And that's it. Hopefully this video is helpful in understanding specifically what you need to know when it comes to converting with dosage calculations. Use the method that works best for you and it's going to help you with your exams. As always, if you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where there's a ton of additional information in order to help you ace those dosage calculation exams. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye!